Hi, my name's Saab, Saab Sembi. Um, I'm going to be covering tonight's session on exploring protocols and services on internet-connected embedded devices. Got, there, got underneath that the context of CCTVs as embedded devices on an IP network. I've got an apology to make, first of all, uh, just to start with, because the original talk I was going to give, I can't give that at the moment. Uh, it's going to be a lot less technical than I originally intended. And if people were looking for something technical and they would like to leave, I won't be offended. It's just that I'm a freelance researcher and a lot of the work that I've been doing, I've had to sign an NDA um, and give somebody first refusal of the work that I've been doing. So if you have, sorry, so if you, if you were looking for a really, really in-depth technical discussion today, that's not what we're going to get. What I am going to cover is this topic, but I'm going to give you some insights that I wish I had when I started to look at embedded devices, um, and, and I'll try and cover them, it, it, because those are the sort of things that you can't get from reading in books and looking on the internet and doing those sorts of searches. It, so it's going to be a lot less technical than originally intended, so be warned now. Um, security rules for masses. Now, these are some of the rules, that, that are basic rules that I found. Um, which are not the security rules that we, we know and live by ourselves, I know. Uh, security products are secure. Now, in, in CCTV, in, in embedded devices, you're going to come across lots and lots and lots of different applications. And all these products are sold as security devices, and we all know that they're not secure at all. Existing technologies are secure. Well, we know that as well. If you look at all the different internet protocols that are around, they're not very secure. If you look at all the services around, they're not very secure. We've had them for years and years and years. They haven't changed at all, and they've not been improved for security. What, ha what we have seen are adap adaptations to, imp to actually set up some sort of security. Passwords equal security. We know that's not true. Um, any hacker who's worth anything knows how to crack passwords or have the tools on how to use it. IP address filtering equals security. That's not true either. We know we can all um, basically spoof IP addresses. Firewall, firewall equals security. That's not true. Professional security services equal technical security. Now, part of the reason I wrote these down here is because these are some of the assumptions that a lot of people work on in the CCTV world. And you know, they're, they're, it's amazing that when I, when I st first started looking at CCTVs, I was shocked that people in the security industry were actually working on these as if they were real life and you could live by them. Private investigations, that's the name of the conference this year. Um, CCTV, voice over IP, video conferencing over IP, TV over IP, all these involve the use of embedded devices to a greater extent. And you know, what you're going to find, each one of these types of devices will account for a greater percentage of the total bandwidth more than all the previous devices put together. I know at the moment CCTV, even though there's compression products at both ends, one to decompress, one to, uh, sorry, one to compress, one to decompress, you still find that the bandwidth of these organizations is far greater than the total bandwidth of those organizations of all their all their internet usage that they had previously. Each of these uses, uh, sorry, each of these uses or will use existing protocols and services regardless of their maturity for security. Um, and that, that, that's, that's massive potential for private investigations. If you're interested in, in, in you know, surveillance, you can use CCTVs and actually follow people around on, on CCTVs. A, a, a session for those German speakers that were around this afternoon, you may have gone next door to uh, hacking CCTVs. If you did, you'd know what I'm talking about. If you didn't, um, because you were put off the fact that it was, it was in, in German language, I, I attended that session. The, it was run by German speakers. It was in German language, but the slides were in English, and it was a very good session, and I've got a slide. I amended my presentation to take account of that. Um, th th there's a hell of a lot you can do. And there's a potential, obviously, with all these sorts of services for storage uh, companies to come along and take advantage of that, and all this is going to create a headache for security, uh, privacy, and data protection. If anyone's involved in those fields, you know, you'll have an idea what I mean. Today's aim, what I'm looking to do is I'm, I'm looking to, to create an interest in yourselves in the future of embedded devices 
uh, by understanding the context of the present and the past practices. So what I want you to do is, is, is basically understand what I'm going to cover today. And hopefully, if you do, take that into consideration when you're exploring embedded vices and, and, and what you can do with them and what you can pick up for the future. Uh, off, I'm, I'm going to try and offer some pointers on exploring technical insecurities by looking at CCTVs in a non-technical approach. Uh, you can learn from the technical stuff quite easily. You can, um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. The non-technical knowledge that I've gained so far in the last few years, that's not as easy. So what I'm going to try and cover are, are, are some of the insights that, that I, I've had. Background, um, basically I've, I've spoken at police and local authority manager conferences on benchmarking the security of network CCTV systems. Uh, in January next month, I'll be speaking at IPSEC, which is the International IP Security Conference. And I'm covering two sessions. One is, again, on benchmarking CCT security of better CCTV systems. And the other one is on how to specify uh, secure CCTV systems. I've been involved in auditing work of CCTV systems. Um, that Previously, I have installed CCTV systems as well. Um, I've, 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 I've got a database that I've put together on CCTV cameras based on a spider that I've written. Uh, I've, I've looked at the vulnerabilities of the critical national infrastructure's use of network CCTV systems. And partly that involved me going out, looking at the critical national infrastructure, um, and, and taking devices with me, one device for finding C wireless CCTV, a computer that I use connected to the internet, plus a recording device and recording what I'd seen. So basically, I, I, I spent a lot of time on the road recording a whole range of findings of how uh, parts of the critical national infrastructure use CCTVs. And there's a story from a colleague of mine who used to be a policeman, and he used to do a lot of surveillance work. And um, it's not a surprise. He, he, we, we got talking, obviously, about um, what he found when he was using um, his wireless equipment when, when he was doing surveillance work. And he said there was one time he was uh, observing a building across the road, and right next to it was a bank. And using the equipment he had, he was able to see five cameras in a bank next door to the building he was in, and he could see all the way down to the vault, absolutely everything, and it was insecure, it was open. Yep. Now, that's the sort of thing I'm I was talking about in the slide that I had earlier on about security for the masses. People come along and they put, put this equipment on thinking it's going to be useful and it's going to be secure and nobody's going to be able to access it. They haven't really thought about it in great detail. Um, next. Uh, research database for embedded devices. Again, most of the work that I've mentioned here, that's the sort of thing I would have included a lot more of in today's sessions um, and, 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 and made it more technical. Uh, what I'm going to cover instead is use of embedded devices, communicating embedded devices, examples of CCTV as a communicating embedded device. Uh, exploring embedded devices can be fun. Seriously, it can be, and if you started to look at it, you'd find out that you know, that's where a lot of the future is going to be. Um, also, hopefully, identifying some uh, vulnerable protocols, not in great detail, just by mentioning them, finding them, and, and hopefully get you interested enough to explore them for yourselves in great detail. Um, a basis uh, for discussion on the importance of securing communicating embedded devices in your organization, the same as any other device. Um, while the context is more important than the technology, you, cannot, you can't get take context from the manuals or websites. So that, that's what I hope to be covering. What I'm not going to cover, as I've said already, is how to hack embedded device. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to find CCTV cameras or web cameras or exploiting the vulnerabilities. Um, if I started to do that, a lot of the work that I do at the moment, I won't be able to do because I'll be blacklisted by the police authorities that I, w I work for. Um, I'm going to provide... I'm not going to provide technical workings on anything um, that I'm going to cover today. I'm not going to cover risk assessment for CCTV systems or any individual embedded device. I'm not going to cover how to select communicating devices or the standards involved in communication, encryption, compression, graphics, and images. Right. Content, embedded devices. Why embedded device? Interesting. Uh, IP-based CCTV systems in the context. Components of CCTV systems. And there are a lot of components, you'd be amazed. Um, the fun part of it, uh, protocols and uh, the 
the, are the vulnerabilities in internet-connected devices any different from any other uh, device, network device, devices in the context? And lastly, the future and the context of that. Examples of some of the devices um, that we have around that are embedded devices. They're all around you. Most of you know, you see them around. Um, there, there, are, there are absolutely hundreds and hundreds and thousands that you have in the, around the home. Um, you store all around us, consumer products, everything from TV, whether it's digital or analog, um, set-top boxes, DVDs, um, play, DVD players, VCRs, uh, cable boxes, MP3 players, and any other mobile players, PDAs, uh, kitchen appliances, fridges, toasters, microwaves, toys, games, telephones, mobiles, decks, um, video cameras, cameras, uh, global positioning systems, manufacturing. Manufacturing's been a big user for a long time, automobiles. Um, they've been using for robotics, control systems, uh, ignition systems, engine control, braking systems. There's a thousand and one uses there. Military for putting together the control systems they use in aeroplanes, missiles, weapons, um, office automation, including um, Fax machines, uh, digitizers, posters, um, and, sorry, medical, I forgot. Um, that includes cardiac machines, prosthetic devices, pumps, infusions, um, monitors, scanners, um, smart cards, smart card readers, uh, door entry systems, and lastly, as you know, uh, networking and network monitoring, uh, modems, routers, access, access um, ports, uh, bridges, all sorts of things. So, you know, there are d devices around us. In this room alone, we've probably each got at, at least one device that we're carrying on us, if not more, within our bags. Yep. There are in, in use all around us. Um, wh why, why would we, anyone want to look at embedded devices? Um, I believe that embedded devices are going to be taking center stage. They're going to take the center stage in the coming internet-connected revolution. Now, we already know that our mobile phones and they've most mobile phones are beginning to start connecting to the internet, and you can get email, you can get uh, web access, and so on. And m so many devices uh, are going to move that way. There's been much talk about fridges connecting to the internet. I know there are some, but that's not widespread. You know, so so th that's going to happen in the next few years, and all of these are going to uh, have, uh, as I said, um, internet connection. The independence of embedded devices. That's quite important because most of the devices that you might use in the office in terms of PCs, they are controlled by you. You turn them off, on, you turn them off, you check the security, everything's sorted out, you know what's what to some extent. A lot of these devices, they are completely independent in the sense that once you switch it on, you've configured it however you think it should be configured. Once you've done that, you're going to leave it. It's going to be independent. You're not going to do much else with it. And that's one of the reasons why embedded devices are important. Um, there's beginning to be far more reliance on embedded devices. You know, look at the internet, for example. It relies on, you know, products that, ha that have embedded devices. Switches, routers, all, all that stuff, they rely on embedded devices. And that's the internet. Now, many of those products are coming into the home uh, and controlling a lot of what we do in the home. They either will or do control what you can and cannot do. They will manage, uh, sorry, they will soon be used uh, to form mini networks managed by other devices designed to specifically, sorry, designed specifically to manage what, uh, that type of network. Uh, and, and, and I'll cover that in a bit more detail uh, as I go along. Um, is the embedded device security mature enough for all this future role? I mean, that's, that's a very important question. And, and hopefully uh, by the end of it, you'll get an idea um, or, or of that. And what makes embedded devices interesting? So, you know, it, why look at them? What, 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 what makes them particularly interesting? They usually fulfill a very specific function. That's, that's quite interesting. So they're supposed to do one thing and one thing alone quite often. However, as time's going on, they're not necessarily doing one thing and one thing only. They usually seem to be as secure as necessary. Um, if they are physically secured, uh, they are often unattended. Many are remotely controlled out of the box. Many have lots of cool, undocumented or unconsidered features. And that is a very important one. Um, the supercomputers of yesteryear will be the embedded devices of today. You know, what about the supercomputers of today? Now, I've got a uh, mobile phone, which if anyone's got one of these XDAs, um, 
you know, it can do a hell of a lot. It's far more powerful. It can do far more than, you know, the first lot of computers that I, I had in my life. And, and you know, many, for many of you, that's the same. Your mobile device is far more powerful than anything you had a couple of years back. The technology you have in your pocket or your bag today is probably far greater than the technology that it, almost any leader in the world had about 10 to 15 years ago. And that's quite important. That's major. And, and that, you know, that is happening. And, and, and as we go along, we're going to find that the, the, the products that we have in our homes are going to be amazingly powerful. Uh, advantages of using embedded devices, often they've got a very specific purpose. Yep. Um, and they have very specific functionality, can reliably be left to work independently without... Uh, so it should be any in in intervention once configured appropriately, can be left uh, once powered on. Other than downsides, let's take a look at what can be done by using CCTV as an example. That will give you an idea of the downsides. Um, lack of knowledge in configuration, configuring them without additional technical assistance, that is a major downside. Uh, again, uh, you'll get an idea of that once I explain uh, the way CCTVs work. Um, if it ha has to be controlled remotely, uh, it's open to network insecurities, that's a fact. Uh, connecting a device to the network means using existing internet services and protocols. That is a definite downside. Flying tour of how we got there. Um, basically, the need for simple devices. The, I'm, I'm going to fly through some of this. I want to get to, to, to the latter stuff. Um, the need for simple devices, the chips. Chips have got better and better. Operating systems have got... Uh, have, basically expanded and you've got far more operating systems for embedded devices today than you've ever had in the past. Um, and they've been growing and growing and growing. Consumer devices, our, our lust for consumer devices, companies making modems, companies like Cisco, 3Com and so on, they, they've basically helped, you know, to get to where we are. Mobile phones, PDAs, militaries, manufacturing, uh, the trends uh, leading to the future, as I said, chip technology, RAM chip technology, communicating devices, killer applications. All phone companies are looking for killer applications, and they have been for a long time. The G3 companies are, are still looking today. Uh, I've got friends who work in um, venture capitalist companies, and they still haven't found killer applications. They are still looking, and they are envisaging these to be on embedded devices. Greater uses. The price prices have come down considerably, and they've... You know, it, it just makes it, the whole thing far cheaper and, and lastly, consumer demand. How much more of, uh, of what we already have? How many mobile phones can we have? In England, um, where I live, I don't know about you guys, but it, it, if, if it's true in Germany or wherever else you come from, you know, if you're on a contract after a year, you can change your mobile phone. And every year, we've got people who are expanding, changing their mobile phones. Uh, MP3 players, again, every six to nine months, we're getting a lot of people who are changing their MP3 players because they're getting better and better. Network devices, um, how many more of those can we have? Wireless network access hardware, robotic hardware. You know, there's a hell of a lot that we've already got, and we're getting far more and more of, of, of all that. Um, what will be connected to the internet in the future? Yep. The question that really should be, you know, what would, won't be connected? We're going to get absolutely anything and everything connected. That's why wireless is going to be so important in terms of security. Um, how these are, were and are connected, usually it's open wireless. I've given the example of a uh, surveillance system in a bank. Um, that was open wireless. Um, you can get open wide, closed network, depends on the use and proximity. And again, I'm going to cover that in more detail. So in terms of CCTV systems, um, I'm not going to cover, as I said earlier on, searching for live CCTV cameras or webcams in any great detail. Um, they are covered very well by other sites. If you are interested, I've got three down there. Um, I'll, I'll give you a moment if you want to copy that. You know, th they are fairly good and, and th there's a lot, if anyone is interested, I have a lot more information um, that I've, I, I, I found far more than, than that's on, on, on those sites. I can't reveal it now, but if anyone wants to contact me individually, I've got my email address at the end and I, I can pass some information on to, 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 to whoever. Um, there was also a session earlier today. Uh, the earlier session was very interesting, as I said, even though it was in German, English slides. Um, you did miss out. When the slides come out, I'd really recommend you look at the slides because they are very good, very useful. Uh, one of the personal privacy techniques that they mentioned um, to <laughs> was, was to use a, a laser pointer. 
Uh, another one was a laser hat. Basically, the idea was if you use a laser pointer at a camera, it burns and it ruins the, the, the camera, and that way the camera can't record what, 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 what it's trying to see. So that, that was, I, I have come across that, but I've totally forgotten that, but it is a very, very important point. That is illegal. If you ever done it in England, I don't know what the law's like here, but if you ever done it in England, you would be done pretty bad, and with 16 million cameras in England, you're not gonna get that far. Um, webcams, CCTVs, what's the difference? Well, often when I say to people I do research in CCTVs, they say, oh yeah, webcams, you can get them on the internet. Well, it, there, there's a couple of major differences. One is in terms of image quality and what they were made to do. Um, webcams are there to put on top of your computer to connect directly um, or indirectly into the network. Whereas, you know, the CCTV is going to be there. It's meant for surveillance. Far better image quality is what they were intended for. And, you know, as I've said, you know, availability of hardware and software to expand functionality. The two things have completely different range of software and hardware. It's not necessarily the same. Uh, remote control functionalities are different. I do know that um, there are various hacking tools and um, which enable you to control remotely somebody else's webcam and so on. Uh, so if, if you're interested in that sort of thing, it is out there, you can do that, but that's not what is supposed to happen with them. Um, therefore, requirement of, of the other functionalities. Um, what makes 60 million cameras for 60 million people so important? The answer is the secu their security. And what we mean by that is the security of the cameras, not the people. Now, <laughs> why on earth would we have 16 million cameras in the UK? We have cameras, watching cameras. We have cameras around the UK um, in underground if you go to the underground, you can go to one, you know, any of the central London underground stations, and you could probably find at least 50 to 60 cameras if you know what to look and where to look. Some of them are open, some of them not so open. Yep. Um, I I in the motorways, all motorway exits have cameras. So they know when you come on, they know when you go off. Traffic lights, there's cameras. When you um, go to pedestrian co uh, pr crossings, there's cameras. Um, if you go drive into London in your car, there's a congestion charge and the cameras there will record your number plate. So the technology is there to pick out your number plate and charge your car or the registration holder of your car um, for the congestion charge for driving into London. There are 16 million cameras and that is phenomenal for, as I said, 16 million people. And do we feel any secure? Did, the, did they stop the London bombers? Um, okay, CCTV is in the UK. As I said, 16 million uh, cameras, 16 million people. It's still increasing. There are more and more cameras. Uh, in the last 15 years, uh, the, the, the British government has spent a lot of money uh, getting cameras in. And they're in house, housing sites where they've thought to have vandalism problems. They're, they're absolutely anywhere and everywhere. But most of these schemes are actually run by either the police or local authorities. And because some of these cameras are quite old, um, that th they are in, in their replacement cycle. Um, and because they're in their replacement cycle, what they're doing now is um, they, 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 they're not opting for the closed systems, they're opting for IP-based systems. CCTV stands for, in case you'd forgotten, closed circuit television. When you put an IP camera on the internet, it's no longer closed. Daft, isn't it? Yeah? They still call it CCTV, um, but you see, these cameras that they're putting in are no longer closed circuit television. They are those type of cameras that are made to put on to the internet. The UK is still often cited as the worldwide example of successful use and implementation. I know this, a lot of the uh, people I know who are in the police forces, they were, they've been involved in uh, other countries and, and this is quite important. This, this, mu must, much of what I'm covering here on this slide are things that I learned the hard way, and I wish I'd known some of this when I started researching CCTV cameras because it would have made a difference to the approach I took in looking at CCTVs. So, so it's, police are, 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 are from the UK actually go right across the world advising other governments on how to implement systems. So if you've had in whichever town or city or country you come from, if you've had people come over uh, advising yourselves from England 
the chances are they were advising not on the technologies, but they were advising on how to manage the surveillance and use of the information. Yeah? That is very important because the police do, have, do not have any idea at all of any technologies that they're using. What they're very good at is how to use the technology. It's a bit like you, me, being very good at using our video recorder to record the programs we have on the days that we want them, but we don't know how it works. We don't know how to install it, and we don't know anything else about it. Yeah, It's a very important point there. Um, so it has been cited as a worldwide example. Uh, success of identifying and following movements of the London bombers, that's, that's, that's known. Um, they did manage to, you know, th th the bombers that were successful in carrying out the bombs, they did watch them on the videos, and they did find out that a few weeks before that, they came down, reconnaissance visit, uh, what times, and all that that took place. Unfortunately, it's after the event. What the British government, sorry, the, the, the British police often advises on how to use the systems to find suspicious behaviour, identify suspicious behaviour, and all those range of things. Um, UK has a lot of expertise. Hmm. Uh, perspectives, um, you know, do, do, do think about it. And I, I know I've put it a couple of times in the slide. UK population of 60 million, all these cameras. Network CCTV research. As I said, the, some, of the, some of the work I've done, database compiling using spiders, benchmarking of security systems, vulnerabilities of uh, network CCTV systems and critical national infrastructure, vulnerability matrix for devices on embedded systems. Again, I will emphasize, um, although I'm not covering the technicalities in this session, if anyone is interested in information, it will be available at some time, and it will be available free, because the people I've signed this NDA with, basically looking for sponsorship, to have it under their name, so it will be available, and it will be available free, but if anyone is interested and they want to talk about it, you can get in touch with me. Um, first of all, forget the technology. It all starts with physical security, stupid. Now, that's, that's very important because quite often, uh, where, where, where you haven't got cameras watching other cameras, they've gone the other extreme. They've gone, <laughs> they've gone and put cameras in positions where anyone can come along and reach and just knock it with something, and that's the security gone. Now, they are no longer recording what they want. And I'd say to anyone, you know, when you're looking at, if, if you're trying to identify, and you're looking at a building, and you're work, doing some security work uh, about the physical security of the building, do check that out. That is very, very important. There's no point in going to the control room and looking at the control cameras and everything like that. You need to get out there and look at the cameras. Are the cameras themselves secure from being tampered with? Because, again, other stuff that I've come across is it's easy to come along and snip wires because although the camera's high enough, the wires start from right at ground level and they go up to the camera. It doesn't take much to come along and snip the wires. So there's a whole range of things. Um, so the first thing is, so, you know, are the cameras physical secure, yeah? And IP-based CCTV systems, uh, they, they can be completely closed, simplest the home network, um, part of an internal network, standalone internet camera. Closed system, as I said earlier on, when they first came out, closed circuits, uh, television were actually closed. Um, they required camera and viewing station to be very, very close to each other due to the cabling, uh, and if they weren't that close, they had to use optical cables. That's just uh, the technology that was around then. This is in, in what I've seen in the UK. Uh, couldn't take advantage of digital technology very easily. Um, so the midway was or a complete digital IP system. Um, I'll cover that again in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's explore IP systems. Network setup, there's internet setup, uh, protocols and services we can observe, um, and the complication of standards. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, I'm not gonna cover the details of the standards. The fact that there are so many standards, there's no single standard for a lot of things that go on. What's the basic CCTV system need to be able to do? Very basically, when they first came out, all they really did was convert image from a format, uh, sorry, into image into a format which can be transmitted to a monitoring device. Record, the f uh, record that um, image for future viewing to be controlled remotely and uh, use and work with existing communications technology. A CCTV management system, again, taking a big system uh, into account, Basically, all that needed to do was enable management of a large number of cameras remotely, um, control recording, access to recording, and viewing of data. 
Uh, network CCTV components. Cameras, I imagine when I first started to look at them, all there was was just a camera, just like the camera, video cameras that we have. And, and, and there's far more to each of these devices. Each camera, because it's uh, got an embedded device, it does run a full-fledged operating system. They've got applications. They've got a variety of chips. There's things in there for image manipulation. There's software in the, in the camera quite often. Uh, there are chips um, that may deal with that in terms of the conversion from uh, into an image back to um, another format. There could be compression, there could be decompression. You know, it depends entirely on the type of camera and what you want it to do. So the whole range of things that will be in that um, camera. Management software, either the, it's near to the unit or at the other end. Viewing software, again, could be at any end. It could be anywhere at all uh, on the internet. Um, recording hardware, recording software, and there's lots of ways to implement this. We're going to look at some uh, examples of that in a short while. What about security components? That's very interesting. Security components in a CCTV system are actually secondary to the system's functionality. What you find is that, again, I mean, I, when I started to look at CCTV systems, I was very surprised by the fact that they are so insecure. And I assumed that they would be secure and, and that security would be a, you know, one of the things that was top on the list. But it's not. Function, they are functionality-led. And they always have been. And they always have been by the vendors. Yep. And it's like, almost, it's like almost any other consumer devices that are out there. They are entirely functionality-led. And that was really amazing. I was very surprised that, that they are uh, such. Um, let's look at a successful vendor's offering. Now, I'm going to choose a vendor. Uh, that I, I think is a successful vendor. Um, it's, it's a vendor that's known, it's the vendor that uh, the guys next door, when they covered the talk this afternoon, they looked at, and um, it's, it's, it's a company that has it's been around a long time. It's Axis.com. Uh, they are possibly the market leaders. I'm not picking on them for any particular reason. That uh, you know They are more vulnerable than anyone else. I'm not looking at their products um, for any other reason other than the fact that they are fairly well known. Um, either they, 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 they're typical of functionality or they lead in the functionality quite often. Uh, they provide plenty of information on the site, and that's really good. Um, they, they, it's, it's, it's good and it's bad because what they try and do, they provide almost as much information as some of the open source systems around. And I say almost as much. There's a lot more they could provide, but they provide tons and tons of information that if someone wanted to learn how they work, it doesn't take much. Yep. And that's part of the reason that I'm not going into the technicalities and I don't feel bad about going into the technicalities of, 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 of these systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto their website and I'm going to show you some of the things on, on the website that they've got, which are really, really cool. So if you really want to mess around with CCTV systems and the protocols and take advantage of them, uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that are out there, some of the cool things that are out there. Um, let's take an approach a hacker might take looking at this information with the aim of identifying what is worth exploring for exploit purposes. Um, the website does provide sales product data, very, very important because they're trying to sell on functionality. And if you know the functionality, that gives you pointers as to how pos what possibly you might want to look at in detail. Product technical data, they provide manuals, how-to documents, they provide examples. And very importantly, they provide firmware and firmware upgrades. Um, last year, if any of you came, you may well have been here and, and heard a speaker speak about upgrading for, or downloading firmware and playing about with it on your own system. Uh, it was a very, very good talk, and if you, if you attend that talk or you like playing with firmware, you know, you've got firmware available on the website. Um, what are the recommended setups? I'll, I'll cover those, uh, as I said, on, on the website and, and with the information they provide. Um, what's likely reality in terms of what, what, what they cover? You see, I've covered part of what happened in the UK. For most systems that were installed in 1992 to 98, government funding was available. Government funding isn't available now in the same way that it was. And again, some of these are not, not technical, but if you're serious about looking into them, you need to understand what the market was like, how it changed, and how it's changed into the future, because it, it depends entirely on what camera or what uh, CCTV scheme you actually want to look at, because if you don't know what you're looking at, you will be collecting the wrong information like I was, because I was trying to collect information of the CCTV systems of 
that time when I first started. And really, that was almost a complete waste of time because most CCTV systems in the UK were actually a lot older than the ones I was looking at. I was researching the current systems of the day, but not all the companies and all the schemes around England had those systems as they were then. So, you know, in terms of wherever you're looking, whether you're looking for a uh, working with a company and you're looking at a scheme on their part and how security is, you need to go back to when it was installed, what is it, how old it is, um, and how it came about and so on. There's a whole range of things that, you know, you really should look at as to how it came about, which, again, as I said, I wasn't aware of. So you can break down into a couple of periods. And in the last five years, technology has changed a lot of that. Whereas way, way before that, um, the systems were completely closed virtually, um, very little being open between 98 and 2000. That's when you started to get things with middleware in where you, you got <coughs> products that you could connect to close, from closed systems. You can now put middleware in that made it connect to the internet. And that, that, was, that, was, that, that was around about that period. And that did carry on for over two th past 2000, but most of the new systems that came about after 2000 to now um, have been changed. And there's a couple of changes I'll mention on the website as, as we go on in terms of some of the services and some of the things that they're offering. Um, yeah, for those being installed now, again, they are very, very different um, than the ones that we got last year. Some of the services, I mean, an example I can give you is um, on the Axis site, most products, and I do mean most products, a year ago were running TFTP. Now, if anyone knows about TFTP, you'll know how insecure that is. Yeah? Now, the new products are running FTP. <laughs> yeah, big change. Yeah. Okay, so you see, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot you need to understand. And that's why I say, you know, taking things in context is actually very important because looking at the manuals and so on, you know, there's, there, there's stuff that you're going to get. You can get that in your own time. If you need pointers, again, I, I keep saying you can, you can you know, email me and I'll help you, but it's very, very different for virtually anything and everything out there. And there are lots and lots of camera companies um, using lots and lots of different components. There are only a few suppliers of these original components, but what the camera companies have done is they've taken a whole range of these components, put them together in a slightly different way, and they've got something else slightly different than someone else. Yep. Um, whatever it's not on the website, can be searched for in, in Google archives. Yep, Google is useful for that sort of thing. Older technology management, uh, analog to digital multiplexers. Um, most schemes run by police and local authorities. I've covered that installed uh, by CCTV specialist. Uh, no networking experience. Many mixed systems uh, are in use today, not built for security, but for functionality. Um, again, emphasize that. This is an example of the remote network system setup. You see their wonderful, um, no, on, on the left-hand side, network camera, PC, switch, um, broadband router, broadband modem, internet, remote computer. Now, does that really happen? Well, sort of. It doesn't happen completely. This is the way they like you to imagine it. This is what's on their product literature. But if you look at most of the schemes today, they're not, they've not got necessarily a switch um, at that point there. They may have both of those. They may only have one of those that acts as, 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 as they may have a broadband router modem instead. They may have one thing rather than the two. Um, camera technologies. This is very important. Uh, you know, the control, the pan, tilt, zoom. These cameras can, can, can you know, move around, look at whatever they want to, and you can con remote control these things, and that's fantastic. You can view them remotely, you can get remote audio. Not all cameras come with audio, only the special ones do. Part of the reasoning is, if you look at some of the cameras around the, in the UK, for example, at motorways, obviously they're not gonna record sound. They don't need to record sound. Whereas if you look at some of the ones that might be in, um, in the town centers where the trouble spots are, they may well be recording audio. Um, one of the problems is that you may find is that um, when you start recording audio, the data protection implications are very different than if they're just recording your picture. Just to bear in mind, yeah. Uh, remote upgrades for software, day and night use, that's very important. Compression, intruder sensors, um, image conversion, email notifications. 
All these things are not the things that were in the first few cameras that came round. But that's what you're going to find on all the, all the websites now. Of all the cameras that are available, these are the sorts of options. And the DVR viewing systems, um, local, remote recording, CD tape, that you can decide where you want to record it. You can record it anywhere. And it's fairly simple and straightforward. If you um, viewing somebody else's system, you can then record what you're sorry, what you're viewing on someone else's system elsewhere. Very simple to do, not that hard. Um, they're programmed, could be manual, automated. Um, Event-based uh, is, is, is very important, and image-based. So, so you can have event, you can have a whole range of things that you can set based on the event or the type of image. So for example, uh, again, as I mentioned in London, the car, uh, car systems in London that for the congestion charging, they will record the registration number of the car. Uh, camera setup, let me just um, go there. Is it going to go? Yes, it is slowly. All right, let's, let's look at some of the stuff we've got here. Um, again, this is the picture of what we had earlier on. Um, I'm, I've got lots of tabs open here in, in Firefox. I'm going to try and go through these fairly quickly. You're going to see things and, and Hopefully, some of these things on here are going to be picked up by yourselves very easily. Um, some of the stuff here. In setting up a camera system, um, assign an IP ad address for your camera, port forwarding. That's very useful. Some of you who know what um, you could do with that, there, there's, that's very powerful. You can do a whole range of things with that. Yeah? And this tells you on the website how you can do it, how you can use it. Very nice, very friendly. Um, designing a system, how you design a system. Now, the great thing about how you design a system is it gives you an understanding how if you know when the system was designed, what it was designed for. Very, very useful, very useful information about um, why and how a certain scheme was set up in the way it does. Another good one, software. You can download the software to... Um, <laughs> To download the software, all you need to do is register. And in terms of registering, it's very simple, very straightforward. You don't need to provide much information. You can use um, as little information as you like. And um, I use my own information. I always do. Whenever I go onto a website, if I'm trying to get information from them, my belief is that I should give them something. And I give them correct details. Now, I know not everyone does give correct details, but the point is you can give as little or as much information as possible and you're still going to have access to these things here. The Axis IP utility, um, fantastic tool. The Axis camera management, again, a really good tool that you can control the camera. Um, Axis camera station. I mean, all, all these things here, I think I've got a couple of slides uh, which tells you more about them. Let's go through all these. Um, Camera Explorer, this is really good. It's a cool tool you can download onto you if you've got Pocket PC. I know um, I, I, the device I've, I've just shown you, my XDA, my PDA, the reason I brought it was to be able to download things like this because this is fantastic. I can go to uh, a client site and I could use this software and I could tap into um, a lot of their, uh, uh, their cameras and it's brilliant. And, and, and you've got it here, and you can use it, and they've got demos, so why not download it? Make use of it if, you can, if, you've, got, if you've got the right device. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> this is um, the, the release text for that um, software for the PDA. It's really good. Um, the pilt ta uh, pan tilt zoom support has been added um, for the following products. So it's these, these, these few products. All other Axis network cameras and video servers with PTZ were already supported in previous versions. So that is really good because it means that you can tap into all the older legacy cameras. Really good stuff. Um, the camera recording support, again, as I said, you, could, you don't have to try and find you know, what the right software is. The software is there. You can just download it and use it. Um, Again, a lot of this is supposed to be demo software, but I'm sure in a room full of um, people who know how to get things, uh, you, could, you, could, you could work your way around that and use it for more than just a month uh, demo period. Uh, camera current station, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's useful stuff there. Um, let's try and work through fairly quickly. The, the management station, now most of you 
I'm not going to go into great details about this, but most of you may not be familiar with what um, some of this stuff is. What, what you find is wh where you've got lots of CCTV cameras, either for the police or for uh, local authorities, you're going to have a room full of cameras, sorry, full of screens. And the, the, you, you, you're probably not going to have more than about 20 screens maximum for a single person to look at. On average, it's going to be about 10 to 12. And each person is going to be looking. So when they're looking, they're going to have uh, be responsible. Each of these 10 screens are probably going to be tapping into about maybe 30 cameras odd. So they've not got the camera on a, uh, all the time for any specific camera. So what they're doing is they are shifting and they are moving around and set, uh, working on a set of rules. And that's what this management software does. It enables you to look, view remotely on a fairly big system. And, and again, this is, this is a fairly good product. Um, this, is, this, is <laughs> this is really good. If any of you get, uh, have I've come across um, one of the speakers that's speaking tomorrow, um, Dan, God, I've forgotten his surname. Um, he's, he's written lots of papers on DNS. He's, 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 he's very good. He's, he's speaking tomorrow. But this DNS service, you'll know what you can do with it. If you ever read any of his papers, it's amazing that the way, that the functionality, and it is functionality driven, if, if you've got a camera, originally the camera systems, w when they first came out, if, 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 the IP cameras, they only work if you've got static IP address. Then they realized that not everyone has. So what did they do? They came out with a functionality that enabled you to make use of the cameras, even if you haven't. And this is their dynamic DNS service. It's absolutely brilliant. And what I suggest you do, if you're serious about looking at CCTV cameras, check this out because there's lots of fun you could have with this. Um, network video developer pages. This is really good as well because uh, I, mean, I can't believe that they, they provide so much stuff. That's why I said some of this stuff is a bit like you know open source stuff in, in, in giving you things that you can do. Um, three lots of things that they've got here. HTTP API, uh, API specification. It, it, Check it out, it's really good. The window development stuff, and then embedded scripting and general information. The embedded scripting stuff covers things like this. So this is, this is the technical notes on the embedded scripting stuff. They've got, for example, for, uh, technical note, pre and post alarm buffer in the Axis 2100. It's actually very good. If you take a look at this, um, this article explains the memory usage of the image buffer. If anyone likes buffer overflows, that's really good. Um, this one here, the information is, uh, sorry, uh, live video at a high hit rate site. Again, if, if, if you go through this, so a lot of this stuff, the way they've written it, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually provided to make sure you as a user are getting the best use out of it. Unfortunately, this is great stuff for somebody who really wants to damage someone. It, it's, 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 it's amazing that it's out there and you can play around with this. Um, this one here, enable Telnet support on the Axis camera servers. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it when I came across this. I thought, that, you know, are, are they really giving everyone whatever they want on, on this website? Um, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to try and sort of move through because I want to get to some conclusions um, about some of the stuff. So all the technical stuff, I assure you, you can get to this. It's not a big deal. You can find all of it on the website. It's easy to find. You could probably understand the technicalities far more and far quicker than I did. Um, and we'd probably have fewer arguments talking about the technical stuff if I'd covered the technical stuff. But you get an idea, hopefully, in looking at the website. We haven't spent much time, only a handful of screens. And these screens give you tons of information. Mm, hold on, that's the funny minute. Okay, right, uh, we've done all these and I've done them fairly quickly. Um, what are service and protocols? The obvious ones, web server services. Um, obviously, if you're viewing remotely, you have to run HTTP. Um, and that's great because the web servers that most of these embedded devices run, there's only a handful of uh, embedded device web servers. So if you wanted to find out about what they're using, most of them use BOA. BOA on the Axis product did have a couple of problems about a year ago and about two years ago. Um, on the Axis products, it doesn't have and it has got a lot better. But if you want to find out and you want to explore, there's only a handful of you know, web servers that are, are for embedded devices. FTP, TFTP, I've already mentioned, SMTP, SNMP. Um, 
If you go on any of the uh, vulnerability sites to look at um, SMT, PS, and MP, you find there's tons of information on, on, on some of the vulnerabilities. I'm not going to cover them. I'm just trying to identify the fact that even though there's tons of vulnerabilities, these things appear in these products, and they haven't done anything to change anything. Um, IP, TCP, UDP, um, you know, one of the things that the guys next door said earlier on, and, and those that were there would, would, would remember this, um, you know, video, uh, this technology, it streams, it pushes, yeah? It works on UDP. Um, and that's, that's quite important. For those of you who know how to play around with UDP, you'll know what you can do with that. Dynamic DNS service, so this, this is the starters. Other thing, it got uh, HTTPS, DNS, Telnet, shell scripting, PHP scripting, you didn't, you didn't, you, uh, I, th I think you may have missed that because I, I went through fast, sorry, I, I missed it. I went through th too fast. On one of the screens, there was PHP scripting. Task scheduler. What are the wonderful things you can do with task scheduler and PHP scripting? It's all there, and it's there for developers. Right, where are we up to now? Technical. On the technical side, remote cameras are not necessarily on the local network, uh, so not monitored as such. Um, no intrusion detection system of any sort, no intrusion profession, uh, no log files. Uh, FTP is recent, it's definitely recent, but it's still, there are many, 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 many devices out there still using TFTP. No evidence of login attempts, little or no encryption. Uh, the HTTPS is a recent uh, addition. Security, uh, IP, the, the security, I, I forgot to, um, Check, oh, there, there's a page there which says, and it's an advert uh, and the sales pitch and on the functionality. It's got their security, and under security it says IP address filtering, um, passwords, and multi level passwords. <laughs> and that's the total security on all their products. Um, innovations in scripting, fantastic. Where up, up to on the non technical stuff? These products were not ever specified. Uh, by technical staff. So all they, they were specified entirely, absolutely, categorically by non-technical staff who didn't know what they were ordering. They were sold to them on functionality. Vendors don't understand security. Vendors aim to build on functionality and for interoperability. Remember Windows 95? Now, I went to um, a security conference with Microsoft uh, many years ago, and one of the, th the excuses all reasons, however you like to look at it, for Windows being so easy to hack was that when it was, when it was put together, one of the underlying principles was it had to be able to connect to anything and everything. And that was partly its downfall. Now, what you're finding is a lot of embedded devices, these CCTVs included, are built in that same way. They're built for functionality and interoperability. So because of that, there's so much that you, could, you can do with them that you wouldn't have thought you could have done with them. Um, they're owned by police and local authorities, um, installed by non-technical staff, used by non-technical staff, maintained by non-technical staff, uh, no IT security personnel involved at any point at all ever. Great, good fun. <laughs> right, a fistful of vulnerabilities. Where does one start? I'm not going to cover them, and I haven't covered them. Um, I, I, I ho hopefully opened up enough there for you to think about. Um, if you do intend to explore it, always stay legal. Um, th there's a quote from Chris Simpson. Uh, Chris Simpson, sorry, I've got his S in his name. He's the head of uh, the computer crime unit in London. I, d I do do government work, and I do work with the, and have contact with the police and the high tech crime unit. He's quote to me uh, when I asked him about wireless networks and um, being able to access wireless networks passively. His quote to me was, even if you are looking at things passively, the fact that you're not supposed to be there, as far as I'm concerned, is enough. So if you're in England and you are looking at things passively, um, be aware. That's the, that's the interpretation that he gave me um, because I was leading on to what I could and could not do, and he quite categorically made it clear that there's no point in my questioning him any further on any of this. Okay, so then understand, the key thing I, I, I wanna get to you is understand the background of each of the schemes that you're looking at. If you're looking at cameras, understand what the, the bigger picture, where it came from, who it belongs to, all that stuff. In England, you know, th th there are schemes and they have to publish their scheme data as part of data protection. Um, well, you know the rest. Um, then you need to test. 
Um, stay legal, that's very important again. Uh, CCTV is different from other network devices and often um, outside of the network, they may be internally listed on an external DNS server. Uh, the use of web servers leads to indexing by Google because the fact that, they, as I said, they use um, HTTP and the web server that they use, all that stuff does mean that they, they can be searched and they can be found, they can be indexed, which is why the project that I was working on that I mentioned about spiders, you can send a spider to search the web server and you will get something back. It may be of value, it may not be value. Um, scripting tools, you know, they, th that's how CCTV is different. Um, that they do have scripting tools. Wide range of software available to achieve the same end. There are tons and tons and tons of software. All you need to do is, is know what you're looking for and you will find masses of free software to be able to explore CCTV devices. Um, the implication of these for clients and other clients in the network and, and uh, today, future CCTV networks, some units will have their own databases uh, of rules for intelligence. Now that's the way that things are going to go. Now I'm, I'm the work that I do, I'm trying to push some of these things that I've mentioned here. Um, direct connection to larger databases of images of unwanted people. Now that's not what I'm trying to push, um, but the thing is, whether we like it or not, that's one of the things that will probably happen in the longer run. If it's not already happening now, creation of event-based intelligence, connections with other biometric technologies, uh, connections with uh, ID uh, schemes, I was at a, um, I'm, I'm a member of what's known as the Parliamentary IT Committee, and we have speakers from key industries speaking to Parliament ab uh, about IT, and there was um, a session on uh, ID cards and biometrics, and my suggestion was that we're going to get, in sometime in the future, CCTV cameras that are going to pick out your ID cards, which are possibly going to have RFID, and they're going to read your RFID, and they're going to be attached to a database, and they will know whether the picture that's on the ID you're supposed to have, and you there are actually correct, and whether you should be questioned by the police or not. And when I asked that question, I was told that that, that is not the research that they're doing. Believe it if you like. Uh, connections, sorry, replacing passport control. Maybe not yet, but the thing is, it's going to happen at some time. We're going to have not just big brother, but far, far, far bigger brother. For sure it's going to happen in the interest of public safety, of course. What else? Uh, future devices must be able to deal with not just spiders, worms, and bots of today. Um, there are talks of deprimitization, but also intelligently. Uh, to deal with intrusion, uh, to be used as remote hacking devices, deal with denial of service attacks because it is quite possible uh, fairly, fairly easily. Um, laser pointers, as, as we covered earlier on, uh, breakdown of one component of the system. These, sy these systems, a single camera has got so many different components that if you mess one up, if you mess up the compression chip somehow, that's the whole system gone. If you mess up the encryption chip, hey, that's made it open. There's lots of different components, and it's, it's fairly easy. If you start looking at something, there's something that can give. In the same way hackers have been looking at PCs, if you know, if you know what you're looking for, you can achieve quite a lot with these systems. Um, and, and these devices are going to be able to have to con uh, cope with these things. Uh, intelligent group coordinated defense at the middleware level. What you're going to get is systems which are controlled by a single intelligent middleware unit, which will control the way that the rest of the network and the connected computer cameras are working. Uh, what about non-CCTV devices? Um, what protocols and services they're using? I'm going to go through fairly quickly because I know time is up and uh, somebody might want to ask a question. Future approaches to connecting embedded devices. Uh, what can you do if you're interested? Start with the basics. Use a risk approach. Uh, what are you not going to get caught doing wrong? Uh, learn about new technologies. Work with vendors if possible to create better solutions. Stay legal, have fun. Um, I'm sure going into prison isn't fun. Other interest of research work I've been doing or I'm looking at right now is um, the embedded device operating systems, security of remote control wireless devices, and a whole range of other stuff. This is how to get in touch with me. Um, suspicion breeds confidence. If anyone's seen the film Brazil by Terry Gilliam, you'll know what that means. Does suspicion breed confidence? Any questions? <laughs>